Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you exactly how to measure your RMS power rating on your stereo receiver or amplifier with an oscilloscope and a multimeter. Now it's been a long week, I haven't had much time to work on stuff. I'm going to record this, edit this, and post this day of, so you're going to need a few things. You need an oscilloscope. Any oscilloscope will do, as long as it can read stuff with an oscilloscope probe. I set mine to 1x for this measurement. You will need load resistors. I will put a link for these in the video description and I'll put the Mauser part number below if they're still available. But basically these are 300 watt wire wound 8 ohm resistors. And then you'll need a multimeter. Any multimeter. I will note though if you have a modern oscilloscope and you know how to use it you do not need the multimeter because the oscilloscope will tell you the voltage reading it's getting. This one also does but it's just harder to read. And the last thing you'll need is a function generator. This is the one I have that I use, but you can also use a phone. You've seen me do that a lot. Just download a tone generator app on your phone or go to a tone generator website on a desktop and just run it into the aux port on this thing. All right, class, get out your notebooks. So this is the uh, wiring diagram. So here we have our amp. This is your receiver. In this case, it's the K Kenwood KR5010. And what we want to do is we want to go to our speaker outputs. So we have our positive and negative for our left. And then we have our positive and negative for our right. So then what do we want to do? We want to take our load resistor. He's a very big resistor. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a wire and we're going to go from the positive end to one end and go from the negative end to the other end same thing over here so we're just going to draw our scope right here we've got all of our buttons and stuff and then the display with our sine wave that we're going to read so your probe is coming out right here which is this guy we're going to take this end of the probe and we're going to hook it to this guy right here we'll just draw a little hooky and it's going to go right in there and then he's got this little alligator clip coming off like that he's going to come on to the negative end. And it is important that you do it this way. And then, up here, we've got our multimeter with the uh, display. We've got our positive and negative leads on that. We're going to take the positive lead, we're going to go right there, take the negative lead, and go right there. So basically that's what's happening, is you've got the amp, the oscilloscope, and the multimeter in parallel with the resistor. So if I want to draw that electrically, that right there is your electrical schematic. This is a more mechanical schematic. Now, the last thing we need is our signal generator. You can use your phone. You can download an app that produces a one kilohertz tone. Or if you have a function generator, set it to 1000 hertz. And So basically what you're going to do with that is you're going to go to the aux input on your amp and you're just gonna plug it in. That's all you do. You just plug that right in. So let's go right ahead and watch this in practice. We're going to locate the speaker outputs on our receiver right here. So we're gonna take load resistor and we're just gonna hook it up. I should probably have a red and a black wire on these but I don't. Next we're gonna take our scope and I'm doing it this way just so it's easy for you all to see and understand. This is not how I normally set this up. And then we'll take our probe and we will connect it to channel one. You can use two probes and then all you have to do is switch your multimeter to read each channel. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna use one probe. This is the positive end of the probe. I see that this lead is going to the positive on the receiver. So I will just stick that in there. And I'll connect this like so. Now we're going to take our multimeter. And what we're going to do is we're going to use alligator clips because I don't have the bright kind of leads. You can buy leads that have an alligator clip on them. See, so I've taken my alligator clips, connected them to the appropriate lead. And the multimeter, it actually doesn't quite matter where you put it because we're measuring alternating current. So that's how you do that. And like I said, we're measuring alternating current. We're going to set this to AC, which is the V with the squiggly on it. And then, I didn't show it, but plugged into the aux port on this receiver is a little cable that lets me connect my phone. So this is just a 3.5 millimeter going into a USB-C adapter, because it's 2023. And the app I use is just called PA Tone. 
you tap right there and you type in the frequency you want 1000 enter and then you tap sound on now if your phone goes into lock screen this might time out so you'll need to uh, wake it back up so the tone starts playing again okay we'll set our scope to channel one so we only have one line there and then I'll turn the receiver on listen for the click there you go and now we've got this tone going through We'll make sure we've got the input set correctly. And then it's just a matter of turning up the volume. So all I'm doing to do this is I'm bringing up the volume control. Now you might need to make some adjustments. You have two adjustments you have to play with here. You have time per division. So like this is if you're reading a low frequency. And then you increase this if you're reading a high frequency. See how that kind of flattens out? This is only one kilohertz. This can read up to uh, 20 megahertz. And then you have volts per division. So like this is kind of amplitude. You generally put this to the very bottom. Now we can clearly see our sine wave, and what we're looking for is what's called clipping. Clipping is when you see these little flat spots right here. Basically what that means is you have reached the limit, and see there's my, uh, there's my app timing out. I'm going to bring it up until just when I start to see that. So this volume has like some detents in it, and I see that at this particular detent right here, we got just a little bit of clipping up there, not much down there. 23.5 volts AC. So now it's time to do Ohm's Law. And the good news is we have little calculators on the internet that'll do that for us. So here it is, just a good old Ohm's Law calculator. And what we're looking for is power right here. So we know we had the voltage, we had 23.5. We didn't know the current, but we know the resistance. And this is the value of the load resistor. It was 8 ohms. So now we have two values we can calculate current and power. So at power, 69 watts per channel. So that was one channel. Then to do the next channel, you just take your test leads and you move them over. And then you do the exact same thing for the other side. Well, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. This is a question I get every once in a while, so I just figured I'd finally make a video on it since I'm a little strapped for time this week. Uh, hopefully next Friday we see this thing in uh, much better shape than it is now. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.